Hello there, Michelle G here, Bendy Sitchi. My pronouns are she, her, and today is Saturday. It's the 26th of October, and this is my floss tube video. So in this video, I talk about cross stitch, um, sometimes knitting, no knitting today, except this hat that was knit for me by a friend. It says Rebel Scum. It's been a little chilly here in Eugene in the morning, so hat. Um, yeah, I talk about cross stitch, things I like, things I buy. I'm not buying anything right now, which is, if you've been here for any length of time, you know that me not buying things is a wild departure from my normal. Um, it feels really good, um, mostly because I'm not buying things, mostly because we just bought a house. <laughs> like That's kind of a big thing to buy. So chilling out on the cross stitch. Also, when you buy, when you move, I feel like it's a really good opportunity to take stock of everything you have because I had to pack all this stuff. <laughs> this is my new crawfish, craft room slash office crawfish. I did not coin that term, but I'm lovingly borrowing it. Um, having to pack everything and then unpack everything and find a place for it really made me realize how much stuff I have. Um, so I think I can go a little while without purchasing it purchasing anything. But don't feel like I'm not going to show you new things because I started this whole new feature. Check out this freebie. And I have another good one this week. So let's get into it. Um, I use my floss tube planner on my Notion app that um, my friend Stitchy Nati made. And it pulls in, it, it the floss tube planner pulls in everything I put in my in Notion. I use Notion to chart my, or to track my cross stitch. Let me show you. This is the Notion app where I check my Every day I enter in what I stitched. So you can see this is my month of October. There's quite a few days that I didn't stitch. This week was, um, well, you know, you can see. You can see I mostly stitch on the weekends. But then there's so many different things, right? There's like monthly and weekly views. So I can look at the month of October and I can see everything I started, everything I've finished, um, the number of stitches I've put in this month, and then my calendar. So Nati made a floss tube planner, and it is programmed to pull in a lot of the information that I put into my cross stitch notion. So it all kind of fits together. So I will tell you that I had one SAF, S-A-F, start and finish, and it wasn't just a start and finish, but I fully finished it. So um, I, there's actually two, but one of them's already hopefully with its recipient. I didn't check with Kim. So, um, this is called pumpkin Krampus. It's a pattern from the witchy stitcher. It's on her Patreon. And I stitched this one on 20 count Aida with all of the called for DMC. And I turned it into an ATC, which is an artist trading card. So this is when you take something that's the size of a baseball card or a playing card and you art on it. So for this one, I just, the background here is a sticker from Beth Twist that you would use to label the back of a finished or framed project. This is just a couple of ripped pieces of red construction paper. And then I put, I cut out around the stitches and put that on there. So I actually made two of these. It was so small, I stitched it twice. So here are the two of them. The top one I sent to Trina. Uh, my friend Trina, who was my partner for the ATC exchange, and the bottom one I kept for myself. I actually fully finished both of these into ATCs on my Twitch stream last week, and then I just let Trina pick which one she wanted. <laughs> and so I just, I finished them the same way, and I just let Trina pick which one she wanted, and she wanted the top one. So this one is done on 14 count perforated paper, and this one is done on 20 count Aida. So um, this one, the Aida one, counts for pick a whip which is from Marjorie Maid. Um, Pick a Whip is a challenge that we get a new challenge every fortnight. And this challenge that I was behind on was Stitch on a Project on Aida. So that was this. Some people say Ada. I say both. It's like GIF and JIF. I alternate because I don't know which one it is. Um, one of them was Stitch on a Project on Aida. So I picked this for my project. And then one of them was Stitch on a Halloween Project, so I counted both of them as my Halloween Project. So this was actually finishes 44 and 45 for the year. I finished 45 things so far this year. Some of them are big and some of them are small. Um, and again, I keep track of that in my cross stitch, my Notion. So watch this. All right. I don't know where my voice got weird, but um, this is the Notion app. Um, I was saying that I've had big finishes this year and then I was celebrating this one. This is... Um, shaded stitchery 
Nuri. This is this Juneteenth day. I started this in 2022 and finished it this year. This is actually framed and waiting for me at Acorns and Threads if I ever am able to get back there to pick it up. I'm being dramatic. I'm just busy lately. Um, but you can see I've tracked all of my finishes this year and I think most of my finishes last year. So that's how I know what I'm up to. Notion keeps track of me now, which is really nice. Okay. That's how I know that this was, this was either finished 44 or 45 this year. I'm not sure which one. Um, I do want to get, so what I will probably buy, I, I'm on a stash diet, but I can, right? I have a bunch of ATCs because um, Heather, Link is my homeboy, has a, has a second Instagram, which is Stitchy Swaps and ATCs. I'll link that below as well. And Heather hosts bi-monthly. Um, exchanges. So I have a bunch of these now from people and I like, I've just been keeping them. I have a filing cabinet over yonder um, with a bunch of needle minders on it. So I've just been sticking these on my filing cabinet. So I have them up there, which is cute, but I want to kind of protect them better and display them differently. So I'm going to get a, I'm going to just get those baseball card holders and you just put them in like your Magic the Gathering cards or your Pokemon cards or whatever. Um, okay. So that was my start and finish, two of them, finished 44 and 45 for the year. I also worked on, oh, because I worked on that and I finished it, I put a lot of stitches into my project, my tail end project. This is called A Summer Bower, so I'll show you. This is by Modern Folk Embroidery, A Summer Bower, and this was in the Lakeside Needlecraft, um, Lakeside Needlecraft over in the UK put out a book um, in 2020, 2020, um, with a bunch of designers in it. And I was lucky enough to be in it. And Jacob from Modern Folk Embroidery put this one in it. So what I've been doing and what I didn't realize, but just found out a lot of people have been doing is taking their tail end threads and stitching them into a monochromatic piece. So I call this my tail end project. People call it all different things. I finished one. And this is a uh, Quaker Coronet from Queenstown Sampler Designs. So that one is finished. And then as soon as I finished that, I started this one. So this is a summer bower. You can see it's not monochromatic. Um, but right here, this light brown and then the bird's wing and a little bit of its head. Um, all, all of these, all of this coloration here. And then the dark line is from uh, Pumpkin Krampus. And then I put up here, just this morning, I put in five stitches from my Stitch for Pride 2024 piece because I, I just finished off a color on Stitch for Pride last night. So every time I finish a color, rather than putting that however much floss is left, rather than putting that onto back onto the floss drop or the bobbin, I just stitch it on here. And... Save that thought because my check out this freebie sec um my check out this freebie offering is focused on that. So that leads me into my other whip that I've been working on. Slowly, not steadily, very slow, very sporadic, um, is Stitch for Pride Stitch for Pride 2024 by D's 20 Stitches. And this also works for Pick a Whip from Marjorie Made Stitches because Marjorie's prompt is stitch on a project from someone else's whip parade. So my friend Jean, who is pediatric X stitcher, um, had this. Jean's, so Jean's whip parade is actually in her stories on Instagram. So you can peruse through it at your leisure, take as much time or as little as you want. But Stitch for Pride 2024 is in Jean's whip parade. And this is the October motif. So I am, I'm stitching the October motif and I'm using it for Pick a Whip. This is Pick a Whip from Marjorie Made because it's in Jean's parade. Right. I think I've said that four times. Anyway, here it is. Here's mine. I have not gotten very far on this at all. Um, I have spent this month more days on this to get this far than I would like to admit. Um... This month I have spent, I'm consulting my Notion app, one, two, three, four, four days to get that many stitches in, which is not ideal, 
I've been very busy lately with the move and everything. So I'm stitching less than usual and it's bothering me a little bit, but also like I got stuff. <laughs> so I, it's fine. I just keep telling myself it's fine. It's going to be fine. You're fine. You're stitching. Don't worry about it. But so, um, this fabric is 40 count Verdal in the colorway Determination from Jesse at Miss Laid Pages. This is the called for fabric. Um, these are not the called for flosses. The called for flosses are dyed by Jazz at KN Yarns. And um, I didn't I didn't order in time to get Jazz's flosses. They sold out. So I'm just pulling from my stash. So I have like, this is a cottage garden thread. This is an almond M&M's. This is a Brennan needle, I think. This brown that's also in the skull is a Threadworks. This is a Stitchy Box Silk. This is a Stitchy Box Silk. This is Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers Cotton. Um, so what I've been doing is each month, I take a little bit of the color from the previous month and incorporate it into that month's um, piece. And a lot of people are doing this, and I love it. So, like, you can see January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So in October... I am using mostly Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers shades of gray. And then I also incorporated the skull as, uh, this is Threadworks Dark Rustic Cherry because um, my friend Helen, um, the Diddy Stitcher, she already did this. I'm gonna show you. Hers is brilliant. She did the skull in the, um, in her accent color and it looks incredible. So I borrowed her colorway for July and she graciously said, take it. So this is where she put her accent color in July and this is where she put her accent color in October. So rather than trying to figure something else out, I full on copied her and it's gonna be amazing. I also want to redo this eye here in the middle of the August hand because it's this floss but I wasn't fussy enough with my floss. I should have fussy cut this floss so that I could get the dark color into the eye. So while I'm working on this, I'll just pick that eye out. It's like 10, 24, it's 30 stitches. That's fine. Um, fussy cutting is when you take a piece of variegated floss and you cut it so that you get the result that you need. That's what it's called. A lot of times people will fussy cut um, to get the color that they want, right? And especially if you're working with multiple strands over and over again, and you want one strand, the color fade to finish where the next one starts, you can fussy cut it to make it do what you want, basically. Um, but this, other than pumpkin Krampus, this is all the stitching that I did this week, which is not very much for me, but it's gonna be great. The skull is creepy as hell and I love it. Um, so it's good. Um, plans. I think I talk about plans next. Yes. Plans. I want to finish this Stitch for Pride 2024. I would like to finish it before I go to New Orleans. I'm going this week for a conference. I would like to finish it before I go to New Orleans. We'll see. It probably won't go with me if I don't finish it because this 40 count Verdal is a little bit tricky for me to stitch on and I don't I don't know that stitching on this on the plane, all that stuff will really work out. Um, but speaking of that, um, I asked my patrons which whips I should take. So a couple of things. I am trying to do this thing. So let's look at our monthly and weekly views. Let's look at... let's not look at our monthly and weekly views. Let's look at our yearly snapshot. We'll do that. 2024 snapshot. So what I would like to do is I would like to finish it if you touched it. If you touch it, you finish it, right? That's a goal for this year. Am I going to be able to do that? No, I'm not going to be able to. So, so far this year, I've touched four, I've touched 12 whips that are still whips, works in progress. Um, some of them I can finish. Stitch for Pride 2024, I'm absolutely finishing in 2024 because that's the idea behind it, right? My retreat spot sampler, I will not be finishing in 2024 because I don't have any more retreats left this year. And there's still a lot more to stitch on that. So that's like an ongoing perpetual project. 
Um, Birdie, Veerland Sisters 1. I won't finish that either because this is the, um, this is my two years of tours bell pull. So I finished La Tour de France. I would like to finish, um, I started the Giro d'Italia, didn't finish it yet. And I didn't even start La Volta a España. So I use this pattern over and over, Birdie, to track, um, the winners of each stage of the three grand tours of the year, because I love cycling. So, um, that won't be finished this year. And I know it. Dakir shawl won't be finished this year. It's huge. It's a huge giant shawl, um, that I love, but I call it a schlinket because I will not be finishing this. And you can see the last time I worked on it even was July 25th. It's been a minute. Um, but some of these, I think I could finish this year. Um, so anyway, I did this poll with my patrons, which one should I take with me? And I asked them to choose between Bushland Quaker, which is one of my oldest whips, auto, no, Christmas Basket, Taking Up Space, and Underwater City. And right now, the ones that are winning are Christmas Basket. This was a Patreon chart from Fox and Rabbit, and I started it on February 25th, and I only worked on it one other day. This is what the chart looks like. And then I modified it to say Kismas in July, because this is my Kismas in July project. Um, my Diana, it is Kismet. Her birthday is December 28th. And it's a little bit different to organize a sale. It's a difficult to organize a sale between Christmas and New Year's. So we just give her the whole month of July. She just gets the whole month of July. So I'll be taking this one because the patron said so. And then it's really kind of a tie between taking up space and underwater city. So taking up space is... Um, again, by Nuri of Shaded Stitchery. And I didn't put in the cover photo, but it's this year's, it's this year's Juneteenth chart. I don't have a whole lot stitched on it. Um, but this chart is like a hundred and change by a hundred and change, like 107 by 106 or something like that. 109. Wait a second. 111 by 101. It's right here. Um, this is on a 36 count. It's all DMC, but I think I could really make really good progress on this while I'm traveling. And then the third place is Underwater City. This is by Barbara Anna Designs. And this only has five or six colors in it. Um, it's really pretty. I super want to finish this so that I can start Neuron City. And this is where I am right now. I have most of the head done. Most of the face done. <laughs> I have most of the face done. Um, so I think that's my plans is I'll probably take those three. Um, the only one that didn't get very many choice that didn't get very many picks at all was Bushland Quaker. Although that one's on Aida. So maybe I'll take all four because I think call me crazy. Let me just go back to my notion app. I think I can finish Bushland Quaker. I think I can. So I don't have any pictures in here cause I haven't worked on this since February. But in February, it was this far along. So there's one giant motif here with a swan in it. There's one on the side, and then there's three or four little ones on the bottom. So this motif is halfway done. This motif has started. Could I finish this? Maybe. There's a lot of color changes in this. So um, it might be that this weekend, after I finish my Stitch for Pride, if I have more time to stitch, I'll get this one out. Um, and some of my... <laughs> Some of my patrons who, they know me well, they were like, just take it all. You're going to take it all. Just take it all. So I think, I think I'm just taking them all. <laughs> I think I'm just taking them all. So that's my plan. I'm going to take those four with me. We're going to see what happens. Sometimes I try to only take one thing or two things when I go on a trip and that forces me to work on that one thing. But I also don't want to be forced to work on one thing, right? That doesn't feel good. Anyway, so that's a lot of plans. Um, purchases. I didn't have that many purchases. I am, so I cut down on almost all of my expenditures. I canceled my floss clubs, which was tough. I canceled my bag of the month clubs, which was not as tough as canceling my floss clubs. Um, I am still in the Fox and Rabbit fabric of the month club because that's a shared club. So, um, but I did not cancel any of my Patreons. So I'm still supporting a lot of creators on Patreon. And one that I support is Dying for Sass. And I support Dying for Sass at the level where Jenny sends me a little gift 
each month. And usually it's a floss. This month, she sent a needle minder. And I don't pay enough attention to my subscriptions to know whether I'm at a higher level and I get a quarterly gift, whatever. But this is a super cool needle minder. It says just one more row. It has a mermaid print on the back. But this is like, um, I don't know if this is 3D printed and then engraved, but it's very cool. It's matte. I like it. It's a big needle minder. And Jenny always sends a little, thank you for being a Patreon, a patron. Um, you can join Jenny's Patreon at um, the floss level or the fabric level. And every month, the cool thing about the fabric level is she picks a pattern from a fellow designer and dyes a fabric for that pattern. So she lets her patrons vote on the pattern and then she dyes a fabric for that pattern. So you like kind of know what you're going to use it for. Um, but I really, that's really pretty. This one also makes me think of my friend Jesse mislaid pages because they love purple. Purple is their thing. So that's my only purchase. But because I'm not buying anything, I am I am very much on the lookout for good freebies. And a good freebie came across my feed, um, came across my feed this week because a bunch of my friends reposted it in their stories, and a bunch of my friends tagged me in the comment section. And this freebie is from inspired by Michelle Ray. Look at it. My end of thread, I shall not waste. She designed this as a freebie because she's doing end of thread. Like she's also, she's, I call it tail end project. She calls it end of thread, whatever it's called. She's also not putting her flosses back on their floss drops. So she took it a step further and designed a sampler that is for free. It's on her Instagram. Um, it's not very big. I don't know the count. 110, it looks like a little over one, a little under 120 by 120. But like, how cute is that? How cute is that? So it's inspired by Michelle Ray, R-E-A. I will, of course, post the link to her Instagram below. Um, she has beautiful stitches and her feed, she takes pictures of cross stitches in her, like the way she takes her pictures is much more, like I take a picture of the cross stitch. But she's always putting like these cute little things in it and like setting the stage and whatever. But um, I was going to do for my next tail end project something big, but I think I have to do this first, right? <laughs> like this has to be my next tail end project. Um, but anyway, so this is free. This is her gift to us. So go get it and start your tail end project. Or really you can start your tail end project with anything you want. Um, but that is my check out. Hey, check out this freebie for this week because it could not have been more perfect. Um, it plays right into my, my thing. Um, the last thing is auctions. So thank you to everyone who bid on the auctions this week. If, um, if you don't know, I host charity auctions each, mostly each week on my pa on my Patreon. These posts are free to everybody. These ones are not behind the paywall. So there's quite a bit on my Patreon that is not behind the paywall. I had Mystic Sampler from The Primitive Needle. This yarn didn't didn't go. That's okay. Maybe I priced it too high. This is a 31-day Fangirl Fibers mini skein uh, happy uh, tiny presents. That went. And then um, the hands-on design, the full year of hands-on design with over-dyed threads and a uh, Aida of baked clay. So this week, just on three auctions that sold, um, not even the fourth one selling, we raised $535 for Restore Together Foundation for Care. So that's excellent. And then I have new stuff. This stuff will run for two weeks because I am not filming a floss tube next week. I'll be in New Orleans. I'll actually be flying back, but... Um, so we're going to try it again with the yarn. I'm going to price it differently. I have seven skeins of this. This is a 100% mercerized Egyptian cotton. 100 grams, approximately 205 yards. Seven skeins of it. It's Classic Elite Yarns Provence. I think it's like a sock weight. Um, but it's really, it, it, it has a nice variegation. And it's very autumnal. So I don't know, can you make a sweater out of 1,400 yards? Or a garment, I 
think you can. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, these skeins retail for seven fifty a piece. So I'll price these. This will be a this will be a relatively low priced auction, um, just to make it more accessible, because I think it's nice to have auctions in all different price points. And then next up, this is kind of exciting. So at Pacific Northwest Stitch Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit this year. The guest designers were Beth Twist of Heartstring Samplery and Teresa Kogut of Teresa Kogut's Creative Whims. And they gave us two samplers that go together and make one big sampler. And those will be released for sale later on. But they also gave us a Biscornu featuring two of their characters, um, Willow and Finn. So this raccoon is... I can't remember who's who. Oh my god, I'm a bad person. This beaver was Beth Twist, Heartstring Samplery, and this raccoon is from Teresa Kogut. And one of them is called Willow and one of them is called Finn. Don't ask me which one is which. And you get two buttons, one with Willow and one with Finn, so you can make your Biscornu with the buttons. And this will never be released. This was only given to the people who were at Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit. So there are like what, 500 copies of this in existence and total, and Teresa and Beth said, this will never be released like this. So that's what you're bidding on for that, and then I'm putting it in a bag. You're not getting the kit. This is not a kit. This is just the pattern and the buttons. And it's going in a bag from my friend Karina at Bags Plus. This is a handle bag with the zipper, and it has a front pocket that you can put your stuff in, and then on the back, there's a Velcro pouch pocket, while I demonstrate how a pocket works. So it's a it's a two-sided pocket. Things can fall out of this side, but this side zipper closes. So that's an exclusive pattern. Probably won't be released. According to Beth and Teresa, it's not gonna be released. So that'll be up for auction too. And then the last auction item, this happened because I got a wild hair and I have this Floss Buddy Ultra behind me. This holds the entire collection of DMC and I realized that I had too much DMC. So I told myself, aside from DMC 310 and Blanc and B5200, so aside from black and white, I do not need 17 skeins of anything. I need two. I need one for in there and one for a backup when I use it up. So I went through my entire DMC collection and I stuffed this Priority Mail Medium Flat Rate Box this is full of DMC. So I'm going to show you, hopefully without dumping it. This is, I don't even, I cannot even tell you how many skeins are in here because I don't know. What I can tell you is that this is packed tight with skeins of DMC. Some of them are bobbinated. Some of them are um, still on the skein. I think there's one or two in there that are a floss drop. A lot of them are full skeins. There's a couple of partial skeins, but you know, it is what it is. So this is also up for auction. Um, there's at least 250 skeins in there. Don't actually ask me how many there are because I am not counting that. But it's as many as I could fit. That's that's all of my extra skeins. So we're not going to have a conversation about why I had so many. I like thrifting. That's basically what it comes down to. And I can't leave any DMC behind. And before I had Notion, I didn't know which DMC I had in my collection. Now I know which ones I have in my collection. So there's that. Um, that's the third auction item. So there'll be three this month. There will be, um, or this week, this fortnight. There will be the yarn, the exclusive Biscornu pattern, and the whole big box of DMC. I also have a giveaway because I realized I have a lot of stuff that could be giveaways and I just haven't given any of it away. So this I picked up on a freebie table, I think at Stitch North this year. This is called Ivy's Sampler. It's from Lone Elm Lane, copyright 2017. And it's just really pretty. It says, my thoughts to him who made the flowers and gave us all that we call ours. Ivy Elizabeth, 2016, October 8th. Um, my idea was to just do the stitching and not the words, but it is charted all in... It's charted in three different brands of uh, three different brands of overdyed and then one DMC. But it would be pretty easy to make a 
make a DMC conversion or just grab overdives from your stash. So that will be, I will put a Google form linked down below and you let me know if you would like to stitch this. And it's, the called for is 32 count cedar plank from Lakeside Linens. I think what caught my eye about this is like the monochrome, it's not monochrome, but the, um, what do you call it? When it's, um, it's all very tone on tone which is what I like. So this will be the giveaway in two weeks. I won't be back filming a floss tube until November 9th. The other thing that's going on November 9th weekend is International Floss Tube FFO Weekend. So from November 8th to November 11th, if you would like to join me, I will be doing less stitching, more fully finishing because we all have that pile <laughs> of things, of finishes that pile up that are not fully finished, right? So back to the notion. Let me just show you. Of my 45 finishes this year, let me sort descending. Of my 45 finishes this year, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 are finished. And the rest of them are not. Are the 16 of them are fully finished and the rest of them are not fully finished. So, um, that is something that I can correct on international floss tube FFO weekend. And a lot of them are small, right? Some of them, okay. We live in hope. This is fully finished now because I sent it to, I gave it to, um, acorns to do. So that's fine too. Let me see. So let's see. I'm going to mark these as fully finished because it's out of my hands. These are other people's projects. Persian pumpkin, not fully finished. Quaker coronet, not fully finished. This one, sent. This Juneteenth day, fully finished. So maybe there's more fully finished than I thought there were. However, there's plenty that aren't. Quirky Quaker sheep, not fully finished. Serbian proverb, I gave to someone to fully finish. Steph's comparatively small. Jen's humsa mandala. Quirky Quaker Llama needs to go in my journal. This one, fully finished. Starry Moth, I need to send. Rebel Alliance, not ready. So there's a lot. There's a lot that need to be fully finished. Plus I have all of them from last year, right? So there are plenty of things to do. Um, I think I sent this to someone to be fully finished. I need to keep better track of my stuff. <laughs> I don't know where any of this is. Anyway, anyway, all this to say, there's a ton of stuff that needs to be fully finished. So please join me um, next weekend, two weekends from now, November 8th through 11th for International Floss Tube FFO Weekend. And we'll just fully finish things all weekend. And if you don't want to, then don't do it. <laughs> it's easy, right? And if you want to participate by dropping some stuff off at the framers or sending stuff out to be soft finished, that's a participation that counts. Check that box. And then you can go back to stitching. Um, okay. So that is all for the cross stitch. If you would like to hang out, I'm going to pull a tarot card and talk about the book that I finished and the book that I started. So if you are just here for the cross stitch, that ends the cross stitch section. And I appreciate you being here and hanging out and I will see you hopefully maybe tomorrow for the Twitch stream where we'll probably be stitching on my stitch for pride 2024 and if not tomorrow, then hopefully in two weeks for the next floss tube. I am away next week in New Orleans. I am going to hopefully go to a place called the Quarter Stitch, which is in the French Quarter in New Orleans. It is mostly embroidery and yarn, but there is some cross stitch. So I'm hoping to, um, I've allowed myself to come off my spending freeze so that I could buy a souvenir of a New Orleans cross stitch from a New Orleans cross stitch shop. It's also right around the corner from the gumbo shop which is where Wade and I stopped for lunch 14 years ago, and I can still taste the crawfish etouffee from that trip. So I will be stopping at the gumbo shop for lunch as well. Um, so I won't see you. If you don't stream on Twitch, I won't see you for two weeks. I'll be live here, actually. I forget that when I stream on Sunday mornings, it's on Twitch and YouTube. So if you like live streams in the morning, I'll see you tomorrow morning. If not, I'll see you next week. If you're here for the tarot card, let me pull it. This is the Tarot of the Cosmic Seed. 
This is by Lalania Simone. She is on Instagram. And I actually bid on a ring. She was doing a mutual aid auction and I bid and I won a ring and she sent me this tarot deck as a, as a gift. So today is, oh, oof, oof. Okay. All right. No, that's all right. I get it. I get it. The universe is telling me something. I am going to listen. We got the tower. This is one of the few cards in the deck that I find truly threatening. Um, I really love this deck because it's a really super interesting combination of like she did, she did it with photography. It's not AI. She did this. Um, but the tower is one of the, so it means upheaval, dissolution and revelation. So I'm going to read from the book. There may be radical or there may be a radical or unwelcome change in your life that is causing havoc. Though the situation is uncomfortable or even traumatic, there is something in it for your growth. The tower symbolizes something built on a faulty foundation that comes crashing down. You will need to build again, so be sure to create a strong foundation for what you decide to bring forth from here. Clear out the old and make way for the new, but with clear intention. So, it's got to come down. You got to burn it all down to build it up again. All right. Okay. Noted. I don't have a whole lot else to say about that other than like, okay. Okay. All right. I'll do it. Challenge accepted. And then the books. So I finished a book and I started a book. Um, the book I finished is called The Wager. Um, the Wager, A Tale of Shipwreck, Mutiny, and Murder, something, something, something. The title is too long. This is by David Gran, who also wrote Killers of the Flower Moon. David Gran does um, historical fiction. I love the way he writes. He wrote, I love the way he wrote this book. So the wager is a ship that, um, it's a British ship. And it was one of a fleet of five that went chasing after a Spanish galleon. Um, it, spoiler alert, crashed, it wrecked. And the survivors were stranded on these desolate islands in southern, southern, South America in Patagonia, just really, really inhospitable. So David Grand took um, their accounts. The interesting thing is they kind of piecemeal made it back to England. Like a few people made it back and then a few people made it back and a few people made it back. And lo and behold, they told vastly different stories about how, how things went down from the time of the shipwreck until they made it back to England. So there was mutiny, there was murder, there was shipwreck. Um, the book was really well written. It was very interesting. Um, the ending was kind of abrupt, but I appreciated that the ending was abrupt because the story ended abruptly, right? I won't tell you how it ended because it was a little bit shocking to me how it ended. Um, but it was a quick, it was an abrupt ending. Um, I, I liked it. I gave it, I would give it four out of five. Um, let me see. There's some maps. I listened to it on audiobook. The narrator was very good, but what you don't get from audiobooks are the maps, right? So um, the ship took off from Portsmouth in 1740, made it to Madeira, St. Catherine Island, and then this is where they shipwrecked. They made it through the passage around Cape Horn, but didn't make it up um, any farther than this. So um, this the Drake Passage down here between South America and uh, Antarctica is notoriously shipwrecky. Um, so they were stranded for a while on Tierra, de, Tierra del Fuego. Um, but there's all kinds of, like, it, it was really, it was interesting. Um, and the island is still called Wager Island by colonizers. The, the thing that David Grand does well also is he fully acknowledges and uses his book as a means to educate regarding the colonialism of England, um, which I thought was, I, I wasn't inspecting, I wasn't expecting that, um, but I liked it a lot. And then the book that I started now is called To Be Taught, If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. 
Um, interesting, interesting thing about this book. Let me see. Where's my title? Where's my cover? But the preview doesn't have the cover. Anyway, this is the cover. It, it It's giving, the cover is giving Princess Leia very much. But this is actually a novella. It's a, it's a little bit of a short story. It's only about 140 pages. The gist is, um, Ariadne, who is the main character, this is kind of, this kind of reads like a ship's log. So Ariadne is one of a five member crew, I think, who is off to explore exoplanets in the, in the known universe. And the gist of the story is humans have not been able to find a way to develop technology to allow us to explore exoplanets and be safe and survive on them. So they developed biotech that allows us to change our human bodies to be safe on exoplanets. So we can, the biotech allows uh, the explorers to turn their blood into antifreeze to survive deep, deep cold. It allows them to take solar radiation that would damage normal humans on earth turn it into fuel, kind of like plants, photosynthesize it. So really not very far into this. And I don't think it's going to be a very action-based book, but I think it's going to be super interesting because I've read a lot of science fiction and I haven't come across quite this angle yet. So I'm excited. I'm listening to it. It's only about four hours, four and a half hours long because it's a novella. So I'll listen to this and then I'm going to hope that another one of my books comes in while I'm traveling because this won't get me all the way through my flights from Eugene to New Orleans next week. So there's that. Um, and that's it. That's all I've got. That's my tarot card. That's my books. That's my stitching. Um, that's all I've got. So I will stream live tomorrow morning. Rosie has a volleyball. They call it a, it's a jamboree is what they call it. So it kicks off the volleyball season for our city league called Kid Sport. She has four games in like an hour and a half or two hours. It's like 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. Done. So that's the middle of our day today. And then we'll probably watch the Ducks play. Um, there are still tickets available to the Oregon Ducks game. So I don't, we'll wait and I go to the game. I don't know. It's pretty freaking cold outside. So probably not. Um, but hey, we'll see. Um, that's probably also why I'm not stitching as much because we're doing like stuff, right? Um, so if you're still here, thank you for hanging out. Be sure to fill out the Google form link down below if you want IV's sampler. Um, and check out my Patreon for the auctions. They will last two weeks. And then finish all the things in the next two weeks and get your finished pile lined up so that we could do International Floss Tube FFO Weekend. I'm super excited about that. So thank you for hanging out. I love filming floss tubes in the morning. I'll miss you all next week. Um, and I'll see you when I see you.